Alright, this is lesson 6.1 on the slope of the line. This will be our first lesson of unit 6 on linear functions. So let's get started. Uh, definitions to start with. Well, we have to figure out what this slope is that we're talking about. So, slope is a measure of how one quantity changes with respect to another. Okay, uh, We're going to discuss uh, slope quite a bit in this unit. It's really going to be the, the main theme, so we're going to have to get used to this. Uh, the slope is equal to a couple of different little equations I can give you to, uh, to kind of memorize this. One of them we actually used last unit, so I'll discuss that in a second. The first one and the most common one that students tend to use is this one. Slope is equal to the rise over the run. All right? And so, for instance, if we take a look at this graph on the right-hand side here, what we can see is that this graph, to get from this point to this point, we always move from left to right, has risen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units, and it's run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. Okay? So you would say that it has risen 5 and it has ran 6. Okay? Um, sometimes what we're going to do is we could get a line that goes kind of backwards like this, okay? And this was what we would call a negative slope. So again, we always move from left to right. This one we would say actually, instead of uh, rising to, it actually falls to, it goes down one, two, and runs to. Okay, so those are two examples like that. We can also think of slope in terms of the change in the y coordinates all divided by the change in the x coordinates, okay? And so what I mean by this is you can set this one equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So if you hadn't actually found the coordinates for this one, as an example, this one right here would be at the ordered pair 3, 3. And this one down here would be the ordered pair negative 3, negative 2. If you hadn't you subtracted those y coordinates and the x coordinates, you would be able to find the slope. And then the last one, and this is the one that I wanted to make the connection from from last unit, is that you can have uh, the slope is also equal to the rate of change. Okay, and so that lo should look familiar to this one right up here. Uh, it's just the change in the uh, dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable. Okay, so um, a couple of little notes that I'll just make on here is that we know slopes that go upwards, like so, up to the right, are going to be a positive slope. And slopes that go kind of downward in this direction are going to be a negative slope. All right. And the big thing to remember, uh, I'll just highlight this part, is that this is the one that you're normally going to use. But keep in mind that if you um, are moving downward, you might want to think of this as fall over run sometimes Okay, for the negatives. So I'll just leave that one in brackets. Let's take a look at some uh, examples that we have right here. So for these ones, what they want you to do is they want you to determine the slope of the uh, following line segment. So in order to do that, what we should do is we need to find two points. All right, um, We always need two points for a line. We're going to look specifically for two points that I consider lattice points. What I mean is they cross nicely at one of these little grids. right? So we're going to look at it crossing kind of like at a corner like so. So in order to do that, um, just try and take a look. It looks like I see one right here, and I see one right here. So in terms of those two points, we use uh, the letter M to represent slope. Okay, uh, People often under, uh, wonder why we use M for slope, why not S or something like that. Uh, M, uh, this apparently comes from the French, and to go up, I believe, is Monte. So that's uh, the history lesson behind that. Anyways, the slope. So from the point on the left-hand side to the point on the right, we have to go up one, two, three, four units, and across two units. So in terms of rise or run, we say we have four all divided by 2. And lastly, what we would do is we would simplify our slope, because 4 divided by 2 does simplify, and we get m is equal to 2. So that would be your slope for that example. Okay. Uh, these next ones, you're more than welcome to try on your own, or you can follow along with me. I'll try to find another lattice point. I see I have one right here. And I have one, let's see, way down there. Okay. So in terms of those two points, my slope is equal to how far do I rise and how far do I run? Well, in this time, in this example, it's down 1, 2, 3. So it'll be 3, but since I've gone downward, it's going to be negative 3. And I've run 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, and that is my slope. Now, this next one is one that uh, is kind of unique. 
uh, I like to uh, talk about this question in terms of uh, a skiing question. Imagine you were uh, skiing up a big white and you had a uh, flat line like this, okay, and you were like at a flat slope. Well, you essentially wouldn't be moving anywhere. So if you just look at this, we would expect it to have no slope at all, right? And you're going to see that we can actually use the same method to figure out that, yes, it does have no slope. So for instance, take two points, and I'll take one here and one here. And how far do you rise to get from the left point to the right point? Well, you don't rise at all, so you put a zero. How far do you run? You run two units. What does that simplify to be? That simplifies to be m is equal to zero. Okay. So this example, we would say, has no slope. All right. And keep in mind for this, you might just want to write this down, the example that I have as a ski slope. Okay. Now the next one. All right. We, we're going to kind of go back to skiing here. Imagine that you came to a slope that is just like a free fall like this. Maybe you're on the cliff. The cliff at Big White, of course, isn't quite a free fall, although it almost seems like it. Um, so what would this be? Well, let's take a look. We would get m is equal to, I'll take two points again. Let's take this point and this point. All right. So uh, it doesn't really matter which order you go in, but rise over run. I'm going to say that the uh, we're rising from one point to the next point. Let's go two. All right. And how far are we running? We're not running any at all, so we get 2 divided by 0. Well, in mathematics, we cannot divide by 0. So what happens is we would say that this is undefined, so the slope is undefined. Okay. So as a slope gets steeper and steeper and steeper, it finally gets to um, the fact where it's just vertical like this. We say it's undefined. I almost like to think of this as it's like a, a infinite slope. Okay. So instead of us writing that the slope is infinite, we write that the slope is undefined, seeing as if you were skiing down this hill, you would just be now free falling. Okay. So that, conclude, that concludes uh, this page. Uh, the big thing I want you to always remember as well is that you always reduce. Okay. So let's move on to the next page. Example two, another good one that you guys can uh, give a try if you like. All you're going to do is we're going to take these uh, line segments and uh, draw them on here. You can draw them wherever you like, so you can be uh, creative with this. So I'm going to take RS. I'm going to put, uh, let's put point R away over here. So in terms of RS, it tells me that I have a slope of four ninths. So from there, I'm going to rise one, two, three, four, and run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like so. All right, so I'll label this as RS. I'll get out my ruler here, and as straight as I can, we have line segment RS. Okay, let's try TU. So I'll try TU. We'll put T right here, and TU has a slope of negative eight thirds. So you notice that I always like to put the negative in the numerator. So from here, I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and across three, one, two, three. And this would be line segment TU. Now keep in mind that these uh, line segments I've done so far did not need to be at that exact spot that I had on this uh, grid. They could have been anywhere. I'm just trying to get you guys to understand how to draw slopes. Let's put AB over here. So AB, this is, we have a slope of 4. Now what I want you to remember for whole numbers, 4 is actually the same as having 4 over 1. So you're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and across 1. So, and so that would be an example of a slope of 4. This one has a negative 1 slope. Well, that's the same thing as having negative 1 over 1 for this guy right here. So MN, oops, I should have labeled the other guy. What did we have? We had AB. For MN, uh, let's put it up here. MN goes down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. You keep going in this fashion if you want. So that could be an example of the slope MN. So remember, the length has nothing to do with the slope right there. The slope is just the kind of the degree of how the, the line uh, is. Okay, example three now. Uh, it gives you a, a question just giving the coordinates. Determine the slope of the line that passes through these points. Okay, so we have the point E, which is located at uh, 4, negative 5. So let me put that one on the grid. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This will be E. Then we have F, which is located at 8, 6. I'm going to change this, actually, just for this example. If you guys could change this to be 2, 1, that'll fit better on my grid. So if I do 2, 1, 2, 1 is going to be located right here. That'll be F. Okay. So um, a couple different ways you can think about this. You can just think about it in terms of rise and run, and that's what I'm going to do for this one. It says the rise is the change in the y coordinate. So 
how much change is there to get from the left coordinate, so the F coordinate over here, to the E coordinate? Well, you're going to have to go down a certain amount. So we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all right, negative 6. How far do you need to run across from there, then? You run across 1, 2. And therefore, we always divide our rise, divided by the run, and so we get a solution of negative 3 for this slope of that line. Uh, another way we could have done that is we could have done it in terms of using these coordinates. This is something that I talked to you guys about on the first page, is that you can always just take the coordinates of um, one point and subtract it from the other. So the y's subtract, like I have right here, and the x's subtract. Okay. Let's turn to the next page. Uh, fairly quick lesson. We're uh, almost done here. we got uh, one more example to go here in terms of a little bit of a word problem. Example 4. Interpreting the slope of a line. Yvonne recorded the distances she had traveled at certain times since she began her cycling trip along the Trans-Canada Trail in Manitoba, from North Winnipeg to Grand Beach. She plotted this, uh, these data on a grid. What is the slope of the line through these points? So, we have to figure out the, the slope here. So, what I would do is I would just pick any two points that you want. All right? I'm going to pick this point up here, I'm going to call it A, I'll pick this point right here, and we'll call it B. So A is the ordered pair located at, we go over 3, up 72. So I'll just write the ordered pair down, 372. B is the ordered pair, looks like you go over 2, up 48, like so. And so if I had just given you two points like this, and let's say there wasn't any grid, well, that gives you enough to find the slope. You wouldn't want to necessarily do rise or run here because it might be hard um, just looking at a graph. So the slope of this line, AB, because although I'm taking these points A, B, since this is a straight line, the slope along any part of this line is going to be the same. So I can say the slope of A, B is equal to my Y coordinates minus my X coordinates. The only thing I suggest you doing right here is just make sure that you're consistent. So to label these, let's do this. This is going to be my X1, Y1. This is going to be my X2, Y2. All right, so just stay consistent with this. So my y2, for instance, I'm going to have 48 minus 72. Now, some people are going to be a little alarmed here. They say, might say, why didn't you do the 72 first? It really doesn't make any difference, actually. You're going to get the same answer. Um, and, and don't fret that it may be uh, negative right here. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll take my x coordinates. I'm going to have 2 minus 3. So if we take 48 and we subtract uh, 72, we are going to get 24. That's right, negative 24. And that 2 minus 3 is negative 1. The last thing, like I said, is I always want you guys to simplify. This would be a slope of 24. That would mean I would go up 24 units for every one unit that I ran. Okay. Now, in terms of this example, what does the slope represent? Well, if we look at this graph right here, we see that the values of y are up here. And that is the distance in terms of kilometers and the x coordinate, my independent variable, is the time in terms of hours. Okay. So the slope of the line is measured in, right, we always do y divided by x if you come back up to here. So we would say it's in kilometers per hour, like so. Okay. Let's finish the last part here in C and D. How can the answer to part B be used to determine how far Yvonne traveled in one and three quarters hour? Well, let's take a look here. If we know that in one hour, Yvonne traveled approximately 24, right? Because if you come back up here to this example, we found that the slope was equal to 24. Well, that means we really have 24 kilometers an hour as her speed. And we can figure out how far she moved in an hour and, th hour and three quarters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this hour and three quarters to decimals. This is 1.75. And I know in one hour, she can go 24 kilometers. So therefore, if we multiply these together, 1.75 times 24, we get 42 kilometers. Okay. Next one we have right here. The time it took, so this is just a kind of like the opposite type of question. The time it took Yvonne to travel 55 kilometers, that's what they're looking for. Well, again, we know that Yvonne went approximately 24 kilometers in one hour or 60 minutes. Okay. And if we know that, um, let's say, it takes, I'll set this up as a ratio, it takes 60 minutes to go 24 kilometers. Then what we can do is we can find her unit rate. We can find that it takes, if you divide these, you end up getting 2.5 minutes to travel 
one kilometer.